The way you design the world in your mind is the way you relate to it in the real world. And when you design it as dead matter just to be exploited, you will exploit it. When you design it without any understanding of limits, you will violate the planetary limits. When you design it with deep recognition of interconnectedness, you will nurture those relationships. And this basic recognition is what I drew from my learnings in quantum theory, that non-locality, non-separation, interconnectedness, that is the nature of reality. But we have a design in the paradigm of mechanistic thought, which didn't evolve, it was imposed, that mechanistic thought is based first on the assumption that we are separate from nature, and nature is constituted of discrete particles separate from each other who can only relate through violence, through force, through action by contact. In the quantum world, there is no separability. My thesis was on non-locality in quantum theory. Everything is interconnected. There are no fixed, essentialized qualities that have been built into the way people are looked at, nature is looked at. Potential is the defining quality in the quantum world. And because it's about potential, it's also about uncertainty. The mechanical world is based on a false illusion of determinateness, certainty, and in the quantum world we know we cannot get rid of uncertainty, the uncertainty principle of Heisenberg. To this is linked to the, the fourth principle, no excluded middle, no duality, no either or. In the quantum world, it's and. In the mechanistic world, you can either be a wave or a particle. In the quantum world, you have potential to be both, and they're complementary. When you realize that the world is one interconnected whole, you also realize that what appears different is actually different expressions of an interconnected reality. So for the first time in human history, Technology in the hands of the billionaires becomes the new civilizing mission for humanity. The illusions about the big technology firms is they create. They extract. They don't create anything. They, you know, software programmers create the platforms that they use. Even Bill Gates didn't really write his basic program. It was some professor, two math professors in Dartmouth College who did the basic program. Um, they have posited themselves as inventors. When basically, uh, we've done a new report, it's um, because Bill Gates announced a new project called Ag One. You know, all agriculture will be one agriculture controlled by him. Where does he set up the office of Ag One? In Missouri, where Monsanto's headquarters is. Uh, but we watch what's going on in India, and we pieced it together. So basically, he's financing a lot of data mining from farmers, which will then be packaged back as big data and sold back to the farmers. But this is exactly what happened in your 2016 elections. Facebook sold data to Cambridge Analytica. So when you think of why are the kind of leaders that we have getting created, it's very important to remember that in these 25 years of corporate deregulation of commerce, you basically have a lot of money in the hands of very few people. And they then are the ones investing in all the companies. The companies are not independent companies anymore. They're basically billionaire money managed by the investment funds like BlackRock and Vanguard, etc. 
they also know that everywhere people are on the streets. Just look at this year. Show me a country where there weren't protests. Chile, Beirut, Hong Kong, everywhere. So how do you deal with the rising demand for a change? We threw out the East India Company in 1857. The Crown took over. They established a policy called divide and rule. And then they started to divide Hindus and Muslims because Hindus and Muslims had stood together to defend their land, their livelihoods, their freedom. It took from 1857 to about 1920 for all kinds of means, census, uh, fake identity, because you know people in India would say I'm a Hindu and a Muslim because they'd, they'd go to mosques and they'd go to temples. And when they'd be asked, who are you? They'd say, I'm a gardener. I'm a blacksmith. For them, the religious part was very, very secondary. Their occupation was their main identity, the place where they came from, the community they came from. And this took so long. This is what led to our partition. And that partition is still being played out. It's an incomplete project. So divide and rule becomes a necessity for the 1% to continue to hold on to power. What are the economic policies being pushed while people are divided? Because that's really the agenda. In 1906, when this divide and rule and apartheid was being put in place, apartheid hadn't been named apartheid then. It was only named as a system in 1948. But in 1906, the British wanted to turn Indians in South Africa into second class citizens. So they wrote an Indian Act. And Indians had to carry, had to register on race. And they had to carry their identities all the time. And a lot of what's happening right now in India around this identity issue is related to that history of the Satyagraha. But most importantly, any police officer could enter your house at any time and demand your papers. You couldn't trade locally. You couldn't practice professions. And so the people said, we would rather die. This refusal to cooperate with unjust law is what Gandhi calls Satyagraha, as a duty, as a duty of truth. He was inspired by Thoreau who refused to pay the poll tax here against the slave system. Uh, he inspired Martin Luther King. And the civil rights movement is very much inspired by Gandhi. But it is when King started to take up the economic justice and e economic equality issues, that's when he was assassinated. Because the part is you can talk in very sweet ways about civil liberties, but you don't touch economic justice. And the economy is, for me, it's a double violence because the origin of the word, the meaning of the word economy comes from oikos, our home. The Aristotelian Tertullian name is oikonomia, the art of living. And when you turn the art of living into the art of money making, which Aristotle called crematistics, then you have to practice violence against the earth and violence against others, destroy their livelihoods, destroy their freedoms, take away their resources. So the violence is multiple. And I look into the future. I say, why are we building detention centers everywhere in India along the border of Mexico? Because I feel that if we don't activate our sense of interconnectedness with all life, with all people, if we don't start sowing the seeds of what I have called Earth democracy, we are going to see 99% people as disposable, especially with the tech working on artificial intelligence, to make sure all the mechanical work is made redundant, whether it be in radiography or law or whatever. Mechanical work will be substituted. And if that's the case, 99% people are disposable. 
So you can either share this beautiful planet with love and abundance and sustainability, or say, it's all mine, every bit of land, every seed, every mind, because what's being mined is our mind now. And if we don't defend the freedoms of all species and the freedoms of all human beings, we could see we're down 20, within 20, 30 years, a level of disposability built into the structures that human, humanity will not be able to respond to. So this is the time to make oneness and interconnectedness as one humanity on one planet, the political project of our times. We have to remember we are one humanity. We are part of one Earth. And whatever we do, we will not let this basic recognition divide us, either from the Earth or from each other. And together we are strong. Inspired, consented, this a quick reminder. God playing hide and seek, my mission is to find us. Step by step, as I walk through the valley in the shadow with death, I fear no threat. The earth is the block I rep, no fear when I step. God steady clearing the debt, I earn the respect. C'est la vie, c'est la vie. They only bring war, but they try to call it peace. Divide, then conquer the mark of the beast. Oppression and control in the name of democracy.